this is a little bit, this does not apply to everybody, but it applies to some of you. It certainly applies to me. So I need this tape out here to, to do these uh, panel jobs. So let me show you why real briefly, and I'm going to step over to the side here. So this is an end cap. The, there's the 360s and the 370s have a 3-inch spindle, and they have the black and blue end caps. The, the 330 and 310 are different, so this doesn't apply. But on a 360, with this end cap, what I've done on my printers is the end caps have a little lever and a spring. And if you pull the end cap off too many times without releasing the spring, eventually the effectiveness, effectiveness of the spring diminishes, and then it's not holding down very well. So when I print with my printers, because I've done this, the end caps tend to kind of move along. Moving along is not something that's okay with panel printing. Moving along is fine if you're, you know, rustling cattle, but not for panel printing. Everything has to stay put. So I can either buy another end cap, or I can use this little homemade method. I just take some tape, and I put it down right there on the spindle. I kind of tuck it in, and I push it up against the end cap and secure it down on the spindle. This is not aesthetically appealing. I'm sure our engineering team is not happy with this. However, if you have end caps that tend to slip, put the tape in. If you find a nice clamp system, use a clamp system. I haven't found one that's effective. The tape works well, comes off easy. I use it to make sure nothing is, can move. It immobilizes the end cap. I don't need a lot. There is still good tension on the end cap. It's just not enough, especially with a heavy or a full roll. It is a recommendation of mine. All right, so moving on from the end caps, I'm going to bring my little list back down in view again so you can see it. The tape isn't on there. I left it off because it's a case-by-case -case basis, but I use it. Next, you want to do the, as I mentioned, you want to do the advanced media calibration after you put it on the take-up roll and make sure your take-up roll is nice and even. When I put media on a take-up roll, I use three pieces of two-inch tape. I start in the middle, I put it on the end, I put it on the other end, I secure it to the core, then I roll it down, take it up a little bit, get some tension, slide the dancer bar in, and I'm good to go. But I use the three, uh, two inch tape, three pieces. I don't use a smaller one because it's not as strong of a, of, a, of a, it doesn't immobilize the media as well. The one inch can still turn a little bit. I want it on there perfectly. Now, some of you may say, look, I don't want to waste the media. I get that. So what I do sometimes to compensate for it, especially if you're using the counterweight system, is I may print the first panel first, and then I'll put it on the take-up roll. So I would do this first panel, let's say it's 10 feet. Once it's out, I then roll it back, put everything on the take-up reel perfectly, roll it forward, and then initiate the whole process. The only drawback is print panel one was, would be no take-up roll. Print panel two through whatever would be take-up roll. Now, especially on a 330 or 370, we would hope the OMOS is accurate enough. It would make the compensations that the, uh, from my printers, the first panel has been perfectly the same length as the other ones on the take-up roll, especially with a counterweight, which is putting very little tension. You can handle that one as you see fit. But keep in mind that the ideal thing to do is to run everything on the take-up roll, make sure the take-ups are all is on perfectly, because you have to put uniform temperature, uniform pressure, uniform weight. Everything has to be uniform through every single panel. Okay. Next, uh, you want to center justify your prints. So when you print on here, you want to make sure you're centered from the rip. You don't want right justified or left justified. Ideally you, want, ideally, you want to print right in the middle. What you also want to do is add a very small gutter, which you can turn on in Onyx or in Caldera or in Flexi. You want to print a small, tiny little gutter on both sides just to make sure that all of the ink is running all the time. It's basically a spit gutter. You need a very, very tiny one. If you don't have room for it, it's not the end of the world, depending on how tight you're trying to run to the edges. But if you can fit one in, try to fit a gutter in. We do recommend it. Next, 
you want to send the files over, and we're going to go on to the monitor in a little bit and I'll show you these steps. You want to send the files as independent. Uh, so when you build the tiles in Onyx, let's say you have 10 tiles. You want to send them over as individual files, not all as one group. You want to send them over as individual files and then keep in mind when you do this, you want to manually rotate every other one. So tile 1, tile 3, tile 5, tile 7, those are all going one way. Tile 2, tile 4, tile 6 are rotated 180 degrees. Now in Onyx, there's a feature that says flip every other tile. But that does not work when you're sending over all of the tiles as individual jobs. It only works if you send them all together as one big job. Then it will rotate every other tile. We are recommending that you send a tile job over as individual files, so therefore turning that button on and off won't do you any good. Remember that. You have to manually go and flip every other tile. So if you send them over and you think they're being rotated because you turn that button on, unless they've changed it very recently, that does not rotate them when you send them over as individual tiles. So be aware of that. So manually, after I send them over, I have 10 jobs now. They're all set and ready to go. I go to odd numbers and I flip every one. Now everything is sent over the way I want it. You want to send them over as either conserved media or group jobs together because you are going to send them all at the same time. We want to put the exact temperature, exact pressure, and everything on every one of them as they go through. And then send the job. Now, there's a couple other things. I have manually flip over the tile. We are recommending that you preheat the printer a little bit. What you don't want is to send the first job cold the printer warms up and you have a slightly different temperature applied to a certain amount of the first job. You want every single tile to go exactly the same. So what I would probably do, I would probably print a slight dummy job on the first one. Uh, by dummy job I mean it's just something to kind of buffer things before it hits the per first panel. Um, a very classic one would be doing this. This is my color chart that I use if I ever wonder if something's wrong with a print heads to help me identify it. So I might put this to lead and then run the job. That way any of the warm-up process, which might be a little longer, is going to be applied to this and then it won't be applied to the panels that come right after it. It's a good suggestion to run that. So those are your core steps on how to print successful panel jobs. It really has to do with taking the time and making sure everything is dialed in properly. And if you do that, we have found, based on our testing, that the margin of fluctuation or variability from panel to panel is very, very small. And that's critical, especially for, say, PVC wall covering, because if you're doing a step and repeat and everything has to line up, there's very little room for error. You can't have one section of a step and repeat flower not lining up with another because it definitely catches the eye and we understand that. So hopefully this sort of overview and step-by-step -step of tile printing is helpful. Uh, hopefully you'll get a line out and order those counterweights if you feel you need them. I kind of recommend them if you're doing serious panel printing and then everything should dial in and be perfect for you.